What's going on everybody? I hope everybody had a great weekend. So today we're going to be talking about how to play samba on two congas. So to all the new subscribers, welcome to a Percussion Life. My name is Eric Perez. Some of y'all already know that by now, but just wanted to welcome you to the channel. And I hope that you enjoy these videos. And I do want to thank you for subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed already, just hit that subscribe button, hit that notification button, find out whenever I'm uploading. And yes, we normally upload videos every Monday and every Thursday. And it's always something new. Just letting y'all know. And it's normally things that you request. And to all my day ones, my goodness. I seriously just can't thank you guys enough. You guys don't know how much you guys mean to me. And I haven't even met you guys. It's so weird, man. It's just how you guys comment, constantly support this channel, and just always give me words of encouragement. Every time you guys message me, like the videos that you guys have been trying to practice on. And man, I love it. Seriously, I want to thank you guys so much for the support and just the continued support you guys continue to give me. So Samba on two congas. Obviously Samba is not normally played on congas. You have so many more instruments like the hapinik, the snare drum. Sometimes they do like the timbal and then you have banderos, obviously. There's so many more instruments that go along with doing that beautiful pattern, that beautiful rhythm that we know as Samba. But, uh, personal friend of mine by the name of Gary Socias reached out to me and asked me to teach this pattern. Now, if you want to skip to the tutorial, just go to the, you know, time frame indicated right here. Because I do want to tell you guys a quick little story. Gary Socias is a musician that I've looked up to since I was just a little kid, man, little teenager. He doesn't really know much of the story, but um, I kind of briefly told him. Uh, I remember when I was uh, 16 and I was already just starting out playing congas. I remember one late night I turned on the TV and I was just scrolling through the channels and I scrolled on to my local PBS station and they were showing a video of the Tacoma Park Jazz Festival. And I see this guy playing congas and singing at the same time. And this dude, man, was killing it. I'm talking about killing it. His tone, his 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 like presence when he was playing, and it just like impacted me so much. Like, wow, I hope to play like him one day, and I hope I could hit that hard. And man, uh, later to come find out, it was Gary Socias, and he was playing with the band at the time, Sin Miedo. <laughs> And to me, that has marked my life. To me, at that moment in time, was man, this guy is local. This is this is how good this person is, man. I I literally just I don't know if that's ever happened to you, where you've met somebody that's around your area, and just by the way that they played, just kind of marked your life. And Gary Socias is a guy that did that for me in 2011 through a mutual friend of ours. Um, I had the opportunity to go to his house and just do a jam session, man. And I will promise you, I was just like a fan, just looking at him play. And you could tell the years of experience he had just coming off of his pants. It's just beautiful experience, man. We were jamming out for a long time. And recently he reached out to me. He actually no longer lives in this area. I think he lives in Ohio now. But he reached out to me asking me to kind of present you guys this pattern that he showed and he literally just showed me via uh, video um, through, through text message and I had to kind of break it down myself man Gary this was hard man this was very hard but it was fun and I and I'm pretty sure you guys are gonna like it too it has to do with a lot of polyrhythms man and he incorporates a lot of instruments and a lot of pieces that coincide in samba and sometimes, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to belittle samba or take away the traditional aspects of this 
rhythm that we enjoy. But sometimes, you know, just like Plena, they use a specific instrument. You have to be able to try to translate that on the congas. And the pattern that he uh, introduced me, man, I was... Woo! I was there just watching it, man. And at the same time, kind of like being a fan again, like just watching the video. Like, I can't believe he wants me to show something to you guys. And I, I took that to heart. I'm just so appreciative. And, and Gary, thank you, brother. Thank you so much. Love you, man. I seriously appreciate you just handing me this. And it really just, as I was learning it and practicing it, it really kind of like blew my mind so yes this video is about to be fun so the pattern i want to show you guys is this Gary, man, you are one crazy guy. My goodness, man. That's just crazy, man. If, if, did you, did you see that? Woo! So, let me show you how to play this pattern. First of all, when it comes to polyrhythms, you need to understand that it's kind of like independence in a way where you're doing something here and then you're doing something here but they kind of are their own entity and their own thing. And you have to respect it on its own. So what's coming out of here has to sound just as clean as what's coming out of here. But they're used to make this one whole rhythm, this one whole pattern, and this kind of a beautiful mix of elements that create a whole. But a nice clue of polyrhythms is somehow between these notes, there's always like a meeting point. So there's a place where they kind of meet to be able to continue going, minding their own business, doing their own thing. So you start this pattern with basically a closed slap on your conga, and you're going to do a bass with your palm on the tumba. So those two are at the same time. After doing that bass on the tumba, since you're landing it at the same time with your left hand on the conga, but what your right hand is going to do is kind of like a finger to kind of set up the next part. So after that, you're gonna do this. So to hear it up to this point, it's gonna sound like this. Now, after that finger, you're going to do another close slap with your left hand. So to put that together is gonna to sound like this. After doing that close slap with your left hand, you're going to do an open on your tumba. Now to put that together, Then you're going to do an open with your left hand to put that together. Now here comes, I would say, the secret sauce of this pattern and it really helps you kind of figure out the flow. After doing that open with your left hand, you're going to do kind of like a ghost note or a finger tap, which is eventually going to help you with the next note but it helps with this next portion. So after you do that finger tap with your right hand, you're gonna do another open with your left hand on the conga. So to show you just how it's gonna sound. And something that I found myself doing is muffing that note on the tumba, and it really helps me just give another perspective on the samba. So to hear that, so to put everything together up to this point. It's 
starting to feel like it, huh? After doing that open with your left hand, you're going to do another bass on the tumba, and then you're gonna do a close slap with your left hand. So to put that together, After that close slap, this is where it starts to get a little bit difficult. Oh yeah. This is like a whole different level of difficult, but yeah, you'll get it, you'll get it. After that close slap, what you're going to do is on this hand, you're gonna start moving your way back to set up kind of what, what finishes this section here. But you're going to do a finger here and then two opens here. But before I show you those two opens, I'm gonna just do one open so it could help you trigger the next part. So it's gonna sound like this. So to show you up to this point, it's gonna sound like this. Now, here's kind of the trickier trickier wrist, the most tricky, the tricky, tricky part. What you're going to do is literally do two opens, one on the conga with your left hand, one on the tumba with your right hand together. Okay, so it's gonna sound like this. So up to this point, it's gonna sound like this. So you remember when I said those two opens in the beginning, but I was only gonna show you one? It's that part. So to kind of show you just that part, that landing between the conga and the tumba, it's gonna sound like this. Now, to end it, what you're going to do is, you're going to do an open on your tumba, and then immediately after that open in your tumba, you're going to do an open with your left hand on the conga. So it's gonna sound like this. And what that open does, is going to trigger the samba to start all over again, which is the close slap and the bass at the same time. So to kind of show you how it would sound when it restarts, it's gonna sound like this. Hope you guys caught that. Now to put the whole thing together, it's gonna sound like this. Now, to play the whole thing through, it's gonna sound like this. Again, you is one crazy guy. Now, let me show you the parts individually and then I'm gonna show you how to count it. So if you wanna just separate the tumba, what the tumba is doing is this. If you want to separate what the left hand is doing on the conga, it's going to sound like this.
let me try to count it for you guys on the best place you can try to pick it up. And the best place to try to figure it out is actually on the tumba. So that first note that begins, it's going to be one, That's the best place to count it. So the one is the first bass. The two is going to be that first open that you do on the tumba. The three is that second bass you do. And the four is going to be that first open note that you do on the tumba, which is going to be those two, two hit tumbas, right? So it's gonna be like this. So that first one. So to hear it once again, so you guys can kind of figure it out. All right, y'all. Y'all already know what to do. Like, subscribe. I hope you guys have a great week. I will see you guys on Thursday.